name of our presentation is Prevention and Control of Dialysis Catheter Associated Infections, Bloodstream Infections. As you all know, those of you who work in hospital settings that are dialysis patients, in order to receive care, they have to have a catheter placed, um, which is like a foreign body, and you have to ensure that there is, um, you have appropriate care in place to ensure that there is no opportunistic infection that, um, in fact, these patients, because it can enter the bloodstream and it can lead to other complications and also can be fatal. So we thought it was wise to look at the catheter infection rates and see how best we could improve it. I think the overall presentation went well, considering I didn't have all the bells and whistles. Um, this is a passion for me because only any one of us at any point in time can be a patient. I want the best quality care for myself, so I believe in giving everybody the same best quality care that I would want for myself. And why did you guys zero in on this particular topic? Because we noticed that there was a trend, and um, I don't believe in leaving things. I believe in fixing it. So that's why when I saw the upward trend of infections, I wanted to nip it in the bud. In 2001, I came to the Turks and Caicos Islands. The Myrtle Rigby Health Complex had an operating theater that had never been used. No one had ever done a cesarean section here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Back then, that was not good enough. So in 2017, as part of our continuous quality improvement uh, process, we elected to review all of our cases of emergency cesarean section looking for ways, trying to find ways in which we could further enhance care delivery. And what we decided to work on to improve the overall emergency obstetric response, three arms. One, communication improvement. Two, obstetric provider skill level, okay? And the third one, rapidness of mobilization of the patient from the maternity unit to the operating room, okay? Now, this involved invo including all of our stakeholders. So we had the anesthetic department, the operating room staff, as well as the administrative team sit with us so that we could unroll our new initiative. So the first thing that we did there's a re-reference the literature, and we came up with a classification from the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, which helps to stratify cesarean emergencies based on level of intensity or severity. Dr. Perry, I noticed in your presentation you kind of took us back to the olden days just to, to remind us of where we came from. Why was that so important as a scene setter for you? That's important simply because, you know, as we endeavor to continuously improve quality, we have to remember that there are stages in our evolution and development where whatever the standard is at the prevailing time is not something that we should ever settle for. You know, and even though we've come leaps and bounds, as I said in the presentation since 2001, to present in terms of obstetric care, we have to continue to try to improve what's available to our our, our, our patients, our public. Okay, and we continuously have to equip our staff members with the right tools in order to achieve those objectives. So it was important for us to put things into perspective because what was acceptable back then, if we had not try to raise the bar, then, you know, who knows. We chose this initiative as far back as 2014, where we lobbied the Ministry of Health. And through the Ministry of Health, we gained access to the Pan American Health Organization and CARFA. And we petitioned for assistance, technical support, to train all of our midwifery staff and the entire hospital unit to sensitize and make everyone more aware of the importance of breastfeeding. Our objectives were to develop a breastfeeding policy that is routinely communicated to all healthcare staff, train all healthcare staff in skills necessary to implement the policy, inform all pregnant women about the benefits and management of breastfeeding, and to foster the establishment of breastfeeding support groups and refer mothers to them on discharge from the hospital clinic. So, uh, 
In terms of developing the initiative, one of our first mandates was to form a baby-friendly hospital com committee. Um, I'm very impressed. I, I am particularly impressed with the amount of research and depth and the, and the participation of multiple members of the groups, as, as well as the innovation of the presentation. So it, they, they range from so many different um, departments and initiatives. Um, I like um, the intervention, it's particularly in North Cake as one of the community, um, but the, the, the scope of presentations has been wide, has been varied, has been innovative. Um, a lot of work has gone into it. Um, and you can see the teams gelling together and you, know, you can see the competition is building and the momentum um, is important for, I mean, as a judge, um, I'm sure the other colleagues were looking for, you know, what is that extra touch of, of, of information or initiative that will impress all of us so that we can make a decision as to who will be the winner. I'm sure it's going to be a very difficult task because having looked at the reading, the material before, I'm um, looking at the, um, the presentations, the response to questions, looking at the, the competitive nature of the groups, I think is going to be a task for us. But I'm sure at the end of the day, the group that wins will be the most, um, the, the one that shows that extra initiative. Um, quality improvement is really important. Um, the, you can't have an organization worse a hospital that doesn't focus on quality. And the quality that the, what we're looking for is not only quality that impacts on the organization itself, but they should show the evidence of it impacting on the patient at the patient level and at the community level. So that's what we're looking for as the extra edge. We wish to see transition to an environment that promotes competency-based delivery and measurement of learning outcomes. And therefore, our Diamond Challenge initiative was developed based on this paradigm shift with the expectation of improved take-up and a demonstrable knowledge transfer. Why is this, this particular area so important for the institution and also for patient care in particular? Well, as you we know, Nakira, um, patient care is heavily, heavily skills-based. We have a mandatory training program already existent in the institution. However, we wanted to make it more accessible to everyone. So what we decided to do based on the low take-up that we would have been experiencing in the past few years is to make it blended so that persons have a responsibility to engage in self-directed learning and also to come to face-to-face -face delivery. And this is where we emphasize the competency-based component in our presentation because competency-based education is about skills and it takes the emphasis off of rote learning, it takes the emphasis off of examination. It is more about practice and we know that this is something that is very, very necessary in a skills-based environment like healthcare. Perfect. Now there's only one polyclinic in queue and this clinic is supported by one doctor and two nurses. What did we do? We developed a partnership with the community. We are talking here intersectoral collaboration and community participation, where health partnered with education to produce people who can deliver professional CPR and first aid. We went to the Raymond Gardner High School, and this is why we went. Okay. Our purpose and our intentions were to prepare the lay public to respond quickly to an accident or emergency event, to improve the victim's chances of survival before admission to a secondary care facility. We want also to promote a culture of safety by identifying the go-to person who is professionally trained to provide CPR and first aid. And in your particular presentation, while it was heavily based on evidence, I noticed that you approached it with a certain style. How important was style in winning over the judges? It was important because even though you have all the evidence to support your initiative, you must bring it home. And I wanted it to come home to everybody. And to me, that is simplicity. And it was simple, but effective. And what was the feedback from the students during the, um, the CPR training and, and the, the skills that they have now acquired? 
So as you can see in the video, they were so excited. We don't have to speak twice. They were on the ball. They were following commands and instructions. And at the end of the day, when they were completed, they were totally exhilarated and excited to show the other students what they would have accomplished. Hey, Mrs. Forbes, you're the special one because you're the only one um, among the judges who <laughs> is not exactly um, in the medical field. Mm -hmm. but. I'm sure you can, as a professional, have an appreciation for some of the projects presented mm -hmm. here today. Um, you know, how, how are you feeling about just some of the research and the depth that has been put into these projects? I am extremely um, excited about this. When I when I first came here, I didn't I didn't really know what to expect, um, other than from reviewing the presentations. But once the presenters um, started to present and brought really brought a lot of life to. Um, the posters. Um, I, I'm also learning quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, I'm not, this is not my, not my field, but um, I'm able to relate to um, the first presentation as well as um, the second presentation on, on the North Caicos mm -hmm. initiative. Definitely. Um, North Caicos <laughs> being my, my home spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it, overall the quality of, of the presentations are extremely high. Um, and you can see that a lot of work and, and thought has gone into to, to the um, presenting here today to the, to, the, to the final outcome. So I'm very, very impressed, very impressed with, it, with what I've seen so far and I'm looking forward to the remainder of the presentations. Medication reconciliation, um, for those maybe who are not in the clinical field, they may not understand exactly what it means, but this is one of the most important patient safety initiative. Hey, Dr. Malcolm, so we've seen some very heated presentations so far. Um, each group has brought their different styles. Um, how do you feel the competition is going so far and are you like thoroughly impressed by the caliber of the presentations and also the evidence that they're putting forward to justify their projects? Yes, of course, I'm very impressed that the teams, the different teams that they came together, they put all of this together. It's very evident that they did a lot of work, they did a lot of research, they went as far as to research literature, the CDC, WHO, and it's telling that they put a lot into this. We will cover today patient safety as a strategic priority for the Turks and Caicos Islands Hospital, a bit about engagement and patient safety, our aim, methodology, results, discussion, and conclusion. So we can tell from the, the branded shirt that you're wearing that your initiative is centered on Stop the Clot. Why is this particular initiative important to you? It's very important because it's a serious health, public health risk, um, venous thromboembolism we call it. And 40% of hospitals, actually that's the reason for morbidity and mortality within a hospital. So it's a major patient safety risk, which is why we chose to do that topic. So what kind of, what kind of approach are you taking to this presentation, given that you're coming after about four others? Well, the approach that I'm taking is through excitement, entertainment, and ensuring that persons realize that we are obsessed with continuous quality improvement. And of course, I want to ensure that they understand the impact of a multidisciplinary team. When it comes to stop the clot, we use a platform of engagement. Engagement at all levels within the healthcare sector. Patient, families, the patients themselves, our staff, and the community. So I think the judges will be impressed at our well-rounded approach to quality improvement. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, now tell me just about your second one. Obviously, you're coming into this competition a second time. I suppose this is your tactic to increase your chances of winning. Um, just give us a, a general overview of what your second um, project is about and just some of the members who are a part of it. Well, a second project is again based on what we recognize as an international risk and it has to do with medications. If you were to Google and find out what's the most common reason why a patient suffers any form of mor morbid morbidity or mortality or adverse event, number two will be medications. And so when we look at the emergency department, it's a fast-paced department. We have to give verbal orders as well as non-emergency verbal orders. And our goal is to ensure that in that environment, we reduce the number of non-emergency verbal orders, thereby reducing patient risk to medication errors.